Anna. Welcome to Books on the Go. I'm doing a five-star TBR prediction video today or tonight, so I have to apologise where it's completely night time. I've I've got no light happening, so we've got shadows and um, lamps and all sorts of things. So apologies for the lighting. Um, but I got inspired by Sharon from Where the Books Go on her Instagram. She posted her five-star TBR predictions. And so I thought I'd do the same because it's a really fun way of revisiting your TBR shelf or shelves and looking at books that you've forgotten about or been meaning to read. So this is a few throwbacks and a few random books that I've think will be five star reads and it's also funny because then you think well why haven't you read them yet if you're expecting them to be five star reads so um, let's start from the smallest one and this is Elizabeth Strout Olive Kitteridge so I'm really looking forward to this and the other thing that happens is when you take them down and look at them again you it makes you want to read them straight away um, this I have not read but I read Anything is Possible by Elizabeth Strout I think earlier this year which is a collection of short stories but they're all based in the same town um, and they have the same characters come in and out of each story so it's almost like a novel in the sense that they're very connected and you get to know the characters and they'll reappear in a couple of stories and so you feel like you're in that town and that was a five out of five for me. I absolutely loved it. Um, and this seems to have a similar feel. It's about Olive Kitteridge, who's a retired school teacher and lives in a small coastal town in Maine. And I love her, the spareness of her writing. Um, she really nails a character to the page and gives you just in a few sentences, you have a immediately, you can get a sense of the characters, the way she brings them to life. And I love the idea of the small town. There's something, even though sometimes she tackles dark subjects, um, and they're not all happy stories, but there's something comforting about sort of going into a small American town. I don't know what that is. There's some escapist element to it. Maybe the slower pace of life, I'm not sure. So I'm totally expecting this to be five stars i since i picked it up to do this video and started reading the first couple of pages um, it did make me want to put down my current reads and move on to this one that's it's almost when you know that it's going to be good you you can just um, savor the anticipation sometimes you don't need to read it straight away but this i will move up move up in my tbr list um, the next one is very different, and that is SPQR by Mary Beard, which is a history of ancient Rome, um, which I don't, I, well, I know shamefully little about. I didn't do much history at school, uh, and I wish I had now, um, because I feel like there are huge gaps in my knowledge. And again, like the Greek mythology, it's just something that is constantly referred to and referenced and it's such a touchstone for things like how we consider ourselves as citizens, how we look at democracy, how we look at empire. And she, I read uh, Women, in, Women and Power by Mary Beard earlier this year, which was a very slim book, but I loved her writing. It's very engaging very easy to read. You can tell that she's incredibly erudite uh, and knowledgeable um, and well-versed in all of these subjects. And so the knowledge is there, but she wears her intelligence lightly and she writes with a fresh, you know, it's a friendly style of writing. So the reader, you know, feels, you feel welcomed in, you feel like you're, she's sharing these interesting stories with you rather than academic style. So I'm really looking forward to this, but this is one of those books that I've, I find it hard to read in the abstract. And I, 
I sort of want to go to Rome and have that <laughs> as a focus for making me read it and it might be a bit unrealistic but I'll, I just need to find a sort of a reason uh, that will focus my mind on it but I'm, in, I'm actually, I think sometimes you do feel in the mood for a, a really good substantial non-fiction book and this would certainly deliver that and it is non-fiction November so perhaps um, that's as good a time as any but um, I have no doubt that will be a really good read. That's S-P-Q-R. And then it's actually quite an eclectic mix, <laughs> this bundle. I have The Old Gringo by Carlos Guentes. Um, I have not read anything by him, but I and I had not heard of him until a few years ago. I think Milan Kundera mentioned him in one of his essays as the possibly the greatest novelist or maybe it was one of his books Terra Nostra I think he said was the, the perfect example of a novel um, and this one I picked up at a second hand store here in Adelaide but it is actually inscribed by Carlos Fuentes so it says to Jeddy from his pal Carlos Fuentes or Teddy I'm not quite sure I don't know um I don't know who that is but it's quite mysterious but this is really interesting this is the story of uh, Ambrose Bierce who's the gringo of the title an American man who went to Mexico and then fought alongside with Pancho Villa and I'm I think I'm mispronouncing that aren't I but um, this is so it's set in 1914 and around that time. But it's also apparently the story of the sort of history of this relationship between Mexico and the United States. And that sounds, I think that sounds quite timely um, to read something like that now. And it also has a woman called Harriet Winslow um, and there's a, I don't know if it's a love triangle, but um, the relationships she has with these two men. And it, yeah, it just sounds um, like a really interesting insight into that part of the world, uh, which I don't know much about. Um, and I certainly don't know much about the history. So it's actually quite slim, um, but I imagine it's quite a meaty read so it wouldn't necessarily be a quick read um so again just sort of thinking of when would be the right when's a good time <laughs> to read it um as with all of these but that's the old gringo by carlos fuentes so i will report back on that one and next we have armative gosh blood of fire so this is the third in a trilogy which um, deals with the opium war between England and China, which I'm really interested in, especially having spent lots of time in Hong Kong. Um, and he, I think Amitiv Ghosh is an Indian author, um, and I've read two other of his books. One, The Glass Palace, which was uh, set partly in Burma, and the other one, The Sea of Poppies, which I think is the first one of this trilogy. And Flood of Fire, I think, is the third. The second one, The River of Smoke, I don't have. So I haven't been able to read this because I want to read the second one and then come to this one. And I, but The Sea of Poppies was a five star read. It's a sweeping, um, epic story, but he brings the characters to life so beautifully. It's one of those books that you can just get swept away in and you look forward to picking it up at night and you, it's pure sort of entertainment but it also um, incorporates so much history of that region that you do feel like that you're sort of getting a sense of the historical events of that time and I'm really interested in that sort of opium war era and I love his sort of gentle humour and um, the writing's really easy to read so it's a little bit um, sentimental it's a bit unrealistic 
but for what it is, I find it very engaging and I did give Sea of Poppies five stars, so I'm expecting all of the books in the trilogy to be equally as good. Hopefully they will be. So this is on hold until I can get River of Smoke. Again, just when I feel like almost a holiday read, but just when maybe if you've been reading a book that's quite hard work, um, sometimes you want something a bit um, a bit more entertaining and like a good old-fashioned story. So um, this one I think will deliver. And then last is a book I'm really excited about, The Lake by Banana Yoshimoto. So I think it was Matthew Sharapa um, who first put me on to Banana Yoshimoto and I read Kitchen earlier this year, which is a, a slim... I think it might even be two novellas from memory, but it was just really fresh, really original, quite quirky, and um, yeah, really enjoyed that. And this is a novel that was actually hard to get. I don't. I think it might not be in print at the moment, and perhaps they're reissuing it, which I hope they are. Um, so I had to track down this. I think it's even a second-hand copy, but. Um, it will still be fabulous and it's about a woman who notices a man across the street and then there's a sort of hesitant romance and then he, but he's got a dark past and it's to do with a lake and some people who live by the lake and I think it has some ties to a cult which is the um, or a cult that is similar to the cult that poisoned the Tokyo subway a few years ago um, so there's some darkness there but I find her writing is so fresh and matter-of-fact um, and quite funny at times that um, I'm expecting it to be uh, quite entertaining and it's translated by Michael Emmerich and he has translated the work of Yasunari Kawabata and I've read Kawabata's The Snow Country, but I just went and checked and it was a different translator that I read. So now I feel like I need to track down this other translator. <laughs> um, so yeah, that, that's another sidetrack. But um, this is the lake, it should be amazing. And again, I don't know why I haven't read it already because it arrived a couple of months ago. So. Um, it's just waiting, but we'll, we'll get there. They are my five-star TBR predictions. Do you have any five-star reads waiting on your TBR shelf? I would love to hear what they are. And I will report back once I've read these, which are all, now that I've had taken them down and had a look at them tonight, they're all moving up in my list. Um, but I'm going back now. I'm in the middle of Disoriental by Nagar Javadi, so I must finish that. So I'll get back to that and see you all soon. Bye for now. Mm -hmm.